Greetings, family, friends, and survivors. Well, I harvested all this bark from just moving the logs. And uh, after the logs have been on the deck for a while, the bark just falls off. It's already breaking down. This is uh, the second load. The other quad trailer was clear full. It holds twice as much of this. And it sure reminds me the smell just takes me back to the most political job I've ever had. That's all ponderosa pine bark. And I sure burned a lot of it. Uh, millions of metric tons of it. The most political job I ever had was being the dry kiln manager. And one of my jobs was to ensure that we had enough hog fuel, so that's why I call that my, my mini hog fuel grinder. All of the bark that comes off a sawmill goes through a hog and gets broken up into this. And then came along this company that said that they wanted to buy the bigger bark, and it was a, a decorative bark. And that was good. It was good money selling the bark, but I had to go and talk to the owners and say, look, you can either be in the decorative bark business or you can be in the pine business. Because if you're going to dry the pine in the kilns, you've got to give me something to burn. So it was really quite a political mess to deal with. One time I grabbed some really thin skin ponderosa pine hog fuel. It was some bark that was like a half inch thick from small reprod trees. And I grabbed a handful of it and I could literally wring the water out of it. Even though we had a drum dryer, I actually took the fuel out of the drum dryer and squeezed it. And it was just running water out. So I put some in a Ziploc bag and I went to the office and said, look, can you burn that? Oh, did they get mad. My goodness, did they get mad. Long and short of it is, you make your next, next trip over to sales, and you talk Randy into making a switch, and then he calls the, the big mill and says, you're switching over this afternoon, and you need to bring in a guy to bark some old growth on Saturday because the, the kilns need some fuel. So it was very political. And then, this crazy stuff, I would have to store up enough of it for the Christmas shutdown. Because over two weeks over Christmas time, the millwrights would rebuild the mills. And I millwrighted, and I never, we just never gave you vacations. Happy to pay you, but you're never leaving. So during that shutdown, you're not making any bark, and the kilns have to keep going. So I would empty the hog fuel bins and we had this shuffle floor, walking floor trailer. And literally around the clock for several weeks, I would be pulling hog fuel and dumping it out in the log yard, which was paved finally. Sure saved on the clinkers in the boiler back when it was uh, dirt. It was like shoveling gravel out every four hours. It was miserable. But when they finally paved it, uh, then you didn't have so much sand mixed in with your hog fuel. Anyway, I would have a hog fuel pile that would be, oh, 200 feet, 60 feet high, 200 feet long, maybe 150 feet wide. And here's the catch. It's out in the rain where it rains 100 inches a year. So I had these tarps. The tarps were 80 by 120. And I had hundreds of tires. <laughs> and in the windstorm, I'd have to go out there and keep the tarps over that big pile of hog fuel if I was expecting to burn anything through Christmas break. Some wild times out there. The, you'd just about have the, the pile covered and the wind would kick up and it'd pull the edge of the tarp up and it'd throw 50 tires a quarter of a mile or longer. 
Oh, and then you'd be saving that fuel for the next break in spring, for the spring shutdown retool. And Ivan, the log yard boss, he'd come and say, you're spontaneously combusting. And that's all he needed to say. I'd have to go grab that 980 and or the 88 and dig the heart out of the thing. Because if you don't, this stuff right here in big piles, you know, 500 yard pile of that and the heart of it gets hot from breaking down and it'll actually catch on fire well Ivan his crew somebody would come over and find me and say you're throwing tires and well I knew what that meant because what would happen is those big tarps would collect a bunch of uh, steam from the heart of the pile and it literally would pull the tarp out from under the tires and then the log yard guys, they're loading logs into the mills or stack it, stacking them in the yard and they see tires rolling across the log yard. Well, that can only mean one thing is that big old pile of hog fuel burped. There were some things about that job I missed, but it was one of the most greatest political challenges I had because how could I tell them their new gold mine of decorative bark was costing them dearly in their pine market. We worked it through. You know, I, I quit that mill once. Said I wasn't working nights anymore. And I had lead on nights mill writing. And I was working, let's see, we were running two shifts a day both mills wide open and then on Saturday they were running a nine on one mill and so for four guys putting two mills back together plus the sorter and the stacker and the whole hog uh, whole log chipper it's just too much for four guys when they would beat it to death running it wide open like that so I was working graveyard let's see graveyard Monday through Friday and then Friday I'd double back and work swing shift so I went at 2 in the afternoon and then Saturday I double back again and I worked at 6 in the morning so six days a week by the end of the week I didn't know my name and one time I came home and I know I was coming home because I looked I was sitting on the couch and I'd fallen asleep for a minute and I woke up and I really truly didn't know if I just got home or if I was just leaving so I went and looked in my lunchbox. It was my only way to tell. And the lunchbox was empty. And I went, ah, I just got back. Cool. So I went to the owners and I said, you know what? I got a question for you. What does the Valdez oil slick, Chernobyl reactor number four, and Rough and Ready Lumber Company have in common? And they said, what? And I said, accidents happen on graveyard. I am done. So I went back to doing construction for a couple of weeks and they gave me a call and they said, hey, come on down, Mr. Davis, we got a day job for you. Went, really? Well, that's cool. Yep, got a day job for you. What they neglected to tell me at that point is it was 24 hours a day, seven days a week kind of day job. Well, I did that for four years, and they made it very clear if anything went wrong, even if I was on vacation, which I don't think I had one. Uh, at any rate, if something went wrong, it was still my fault. That kind of a... I keep ending up with these kinds of jobs. Anyway, there. You have my most political job that I've ever done was hog fuel. Have a blessed day. I am.